This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Five things to watch here on KC Sports Network, getting you ready for Chiefs Eagles on Monday Night Football. You're going to hear from a variety of voices across KC Sports Network's Chiefs coverage. But as always, we're kicking this thing off with our thing to watch. And look, the Philadelphia Eagles, they've had a high quality, diverse run game in recent memory in the last few years. That's why they've had a lot of success, you know, especially last year. This is a difficult run game to, you know, try to prepare for, but it could be a good thing to try to make them run one dimensional, Matthew. Yeah, the Eagles are going to be at their best, like most teams, but especially the Eagles are at their best when there's an equal threat to the run in the pass. And this year, especially the past few weeks leading up to their bye, the Eagles' run game had started to stall out a little bit, and I think you would see their overall offensive output dip because of it. They can match the game versus the Jets or some of their, you know, their uh, games along the way. The offense was a little bit more labored because the run game had slowed down. Teams were able to play just the pass against them, and it was clearly still effective. There's still a very good offense with just throwing the football, but if you aren't having to worry about stopping the run with a heavy box or rotating an extra safety down post-snap, playing in base personnel, if you are able to stop the run early, establish a precedent that the Eagles are going to have to throw the ball to beat you, I think you can help yourself out. Because the issue is the Eagles present quite the conundrum for defenses. You either need extra bodies in the box to stop the run game, especially when Jalen Hurts can participate. That adds an extra player to the fits that you have to deal with. So you have need extra players in the box, but then, oh wait, A.J. Brown is great on the outside. He needs extra attention on the outside. Opposite him is Devonta Smith. You run out of players real quick when you have to defend in all of these parts. So if you can slow down the run game and force them just to be a throwing team, you can at least take one of those issues off the table. And that's where I think defenses are starting to have a little bit more success against the Eagles this year. And the Jalen Hurts has not been 100%, came out of the bye week and said, hey, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. This break came at the perfect time. I really do feel healthy. I needed this break. But it's not that like that's not stopped them from running the ball this season. They are third in the NFL in attempts. That is the they were third in the NFL in attempts last year. They were they were fifth in yards. They're eighth in yards this year. The reason for that drop back, they're now twenty first in yards per rush at four yards per clip here. The Chiefs defense has an opportunity to step up and take advantage of this. When they played in the Super Bowl last year, this Chiefs defense had a lot on their plate in the run game, which they're still going to have. And it was still ridiculously effective. It was hard to stop this offense. It's why the Philadelphia Eagles put up 35 points. They were averaging over half a yard more per rush last season than they are this season. That is a massive difference. If you, if you don't think that's a massive difference, on three downs, that's a yard and a half. That is a tush push away from a first down there. The Chiefs have an opportunity to stop the run early, Try and put some points on the board coming out of the you know coming out of the bye in their first fifteen with Andy. If they can stop this Philadelphia Eagles, make them think twice about running the ball, make them feel like they need to throw to keep up. That uh, can allow these Chiefs safeties to sit back a little bit further. You know, kind of eliminate some of the run pass conflict for Drew Tranquil. It just makes things a lot easier on this front to do what they need to do to stop this Eagles off. So. Do you think that the Chiefs try to get aggressive early on in in the early downs to try to help try to help you know alleviate that a little bit? Do we think that's something that they might try to employ, Maddie? And the problem is, I think you have a little bit of a feeling out period because you're to Craig's point there. Jalen Hurts hasn't been healthy, so there hasn't been much designed run game from Jalen Hurts. Yes, they will still have him read something out on uh, uh, you know like a read option but they aren't getting him involved quite as much in the designed run game. So I think there is going to be a little bit of a feeling out period coming out of the bye week. That said, yes, I think early first downs, uh, the Eagles are pretty much always going to be in like 11 personnel on first down. That's kind of what they're going to go with. Um, and so I think there's they got to be ready to step up and stop the run game. You do got to come out early in this game on first down, stop the run game. I think the Eagles are going to start pulling four or five yards every single run to start each and every possession or each set of fresh downs, it's going to get really difficult for the Chiefs. You need to probably risk giving up a big play over the top early in this game to set a precedent, precedent that that is not going to be available for them all game long. 
And I do think that the Chiefs have an opportunity to get into this 3-3-5 three, 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 defense that we've seen a little bit more. That clogs up the middle of the defense a little bit. Uh, it, it makes it more difficult when they are running some of these option plays where maybe it's DeAndre Swift on a running back dive. You can trust that your defensive linemen are going to clog that up a little bit. You know, they're, they're going to cover a lot of those interior gaps and make it more difficult for the running back to take the handoff there. You can force the ball into Jalen Hurts' hands a little bit more. Test that out and try and pin your ears back on the outside with a Drew Tranquil, with a Leo Chanel, with a Willie Gay Jr., a Jack Cochran. Live in that 3-3-5 a little bit more. I know the rushing success hasn't been to the level of some of their other defenses this season. They're just 41% defensive success against the run out of the 3-3-5 this year. But against the option especially, it makes a ton of sense to clog things up in the middle and essentially say, hey, listen, linebackers, your primary thought isn't that you need to step up there and stop the running back. Pin your ears back. Keep the quarterback contained. We'll clean everything else up inside because we've compacted everything in the middle. Yeah, and like, you know, you can get a little bit more flexibility with how you, you know, force reads with the with the with Jalen Hurts too when you've got extra linebackers if you want to scrape it you can it's a little bit easier with more linebackers on the field uh yeah like I think I, early or I it'd just be fascinating to see for me because like yeah I think early down success is going to be one of the defining factors in this game and we talked a little bit about this I think when we we're on the lab it's you know you you've got to prepare for four downs of football differently than you do you know with other less risky less aggressive coaching staffs that don't have, you know, the 92% success rate play that is the QB sneak for the Philadelphia Eagles. So, you know, it's got to take some, if you're giving up early down runs, it does make things a lot more challenging. You know, if you get into a second and three, they're getting a set of downs. They're getting another set of downs. Like it's like, it's just like, that's, it's, 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 it's near automatic. So, Definitely something you got to watch for there. Anything else on this run game and, and trying to slow that down to try to make them one dimensional, Matthew? Yeah, I mean, it puts pressure on the offense, the Chiefs' offense to score points, too. I mean, like, one of the best ways to slow down a run game is to make opposing offenses also need to score points. This game is just sitting there at six to three deep into the third quarter. Yeah. The Eagles are more than willing to just run the football because not only are they keeping the Chiefs' offense off the field, but the game is close. There's no reason for them to try to score quickly. So, it's beyond just staying in, you know, out of third and shorts or staying out of fourth and short to allow the tush push. It's just, it's about how the Chiefs allocate resources to stopping this Eagles off. It's one of the best offenses in the NFL when you can start playing with a lighter box or start playing with lighter personnel because the run game isn't tearing you apart because you aren't having to dedicate all the resources. Now maybe you can double team an AJ Brown. Maybe you can sit in too high and put tops on both Devonta Smith and AJ Brown at the same time. It just gives the defense a lot more answers against the pass, which is still going to be lethal no matter what. So I, I think it's a little bit less about just also stopping in a first down. It's just not letting the Eagles get rolling. Let them lean into their tendency this year to be pass heavy. Last year, they made sure they ran the ball. This year, they will start you know, uh, swaying towards a pass heavy team if you stop them early. So I think it's that first Second quarter, making sure the run D stays stout to start drives, to let the Eagles get more comfortable throwing the ball. It's kind of where the key is going to be. Especially if Dallas Goddard is projected to miss this game. If he's not there on the field, that limits some of the heavy personnel that these, the Eagles team can utilize, which will keep the Chiefs in their sub-package defense. If they're in their sub-package defense, you are going to see a lot more of Trent McDuffie, Legereus Sneed, you know, blitzing off the edge, trying to keep Jalen Hurts in the pocket can allow you know some of that stuff to condense more in the middle and keep that too high structure still on the field make sure that everybody stays tight stays right the way that we've seen it we have seen games this year where the 4-3 defense their base defense against heavy personnel has been taken advantage of as the Chiefs have tried to stack the box against guys if they can live against 11 personnel in the nickel and still come up with some of those run stops it can be a long day for this Eagles offense as we've seen for many good offenses so far this year. For more on the trenches, we're going to toss it over to Tucker D. Franklin and Big B talk about what's going on in the middle of the field. All right, I appreciate it, Craig. Thank you guys for coming on over to Outside the Trenches. 
Listen, we're talking about the trenches here. You guys already know I'm hanging out with Nick Leckie, Big B, Brian Anley, and we are talking about what is probably the biggest trench matchup that we'll talk about this season uh, in terms of just uh, star power and, and names and the dynamic ability of both sides of the trenches. Let's first start for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Play a, a not not a great game against the uh, the Miami Dolphins, but good enough to get it done. Really weird game against the Miami Dolphins where the Chiefs don't score any points in the second half and still win a football game. Uh, but coming into this game, Big B, against the defensive line, that's pretty much the Georgia Bulldogs from a few years ago uh, that won the national title. But a defensive line that's got some dudes on it, what do you kind of expect to see from the uh, Chiefs offensive line? Well, the one thing is is that Jalen Carter right now may be the second or third best defensive tackle in football. That's number one. Uh, Aaron Donald, Justin Simmons, and then him. So it's going to be tough. He's inside and he pushes everybody around. Run game, pass game. The guy is an absolute monster. He's going to have to be accounted for. And that means that they, if, if you double team him, which you have to do, the guys on the outside are free. So, uh, and they also still have Fletcher Cox. So, I mean, they, they, their defensive line is scary good. It's scary good. I think you can still run the ball. Against them, I believe that you can still do that, and teams have had a little bit of success running it. But you got to protect because you can definitely throw against the Eagles. That's the thing. They're back in. Their secondary is not great. So if you can protect and you can hold up, you can complete some passes down the field. So it's going to be tricky. Um, yeah, it, yeah, the Chiefs are going to have their hands full. They're just going to have their hands full. The Chiefs will have more than her hands full because you got Josh Sweat and then you got um uh, who's number seven? Uh Hassan Reddick. Yes. Listed as a linebacker, but he's a stand up D end. And he I mean, he, Micah Parsons gets all the love for for, for being the slightest just, little player at his speed. Hassan Reddick is an absolute, absolute dog. As part Rottweiler, part bloodhound. <laughs> Um, you know, part with it, part Greyhound. <laughs> the, the dude is just winning with so much speed and finesse. It's fantastic. And Josh Sweat, too, they look like they're having so much fun out there. So yeah. it gives a damn if you don't have a defensive uh, secondary. Good luck protecting him. And, and look, the Chiefs with their line play has been so god-awful against yeah. mid-level teams. This might be one of those games where I think they're going to beat them so bad that the Chiefs are going to win. Just because this mismatch right now looks like I'm Mahomes. I'm like, what's her plan? I better get on this Peyton Manning. Balls out my hand. One point eight seconds. Plain simple. Like that's it. They win quick, and that's the thing about about the Eagles is that when we were looking at some of the plays, if you go back on the KCSN YouTube channel, you can watch uh, the breakdown with Chase Daniel and, and Matt Hamilton. They talk about this against the uh, the Eagles Cowboys game. There's a couple times where Dak has some open receivers. And they have some opportunities where they can take some hole shots because maybe the coverage isn't as strong in the back end. But because Jalen Carter's winning so quick up the middle, it it, it it makes it so impossible for him to be able to deliver a shot where he has to hold on to the ball for three seconds. And we know Patrick Mahomes, he likes to leak out of the pocket a little bit more than step up into the pocket that maybe like Dak does. So maybe Dak can be in a, a big thing that the Chiefs look for. Mahomes' legs are probably going to be a big thing uh, in this game to take advantage of. But you mentioned uh, uh, they just have so many good players. There's so many good defensive linemen. Josh Sweat right now, top seven in terms of, he's tied for seventh in terms of uh, total pressures, according to PFF. And they've got, you know, Hassan Reddick has 35 pressures. They've got all kinds of guys near the top of the list. Jalen Carter has 29 pressures. So they've got guys that are getting after the quarterback. They are getting after the quarterback, causing havoc back there. The Chiefs are allowing a lot of pressures on the offensive side of the ball. This is something that they've done for a couple of years now. Patrick Mahomes has just been really good at avoiding sacks, avoiding uh, turning those pressures into sacks. But let's flip it to the other side of uh, this matchup. The Chiefs defensive line going against the Eagles offensive line. It's no secret they've got a pretty damn good offensive line. The Philadelphia Eagles do. They've got... You know, we talk about how good the Chiefs' interior of the offensive line is. This is probably the best interior offensive line that you're going to find in football with Jason Kelsey and the Philadelphia Eagles. 
yeah, uh, and they run the football. They run it well. Um, it, it's going to be tough for – now, here's the thing. The the, the Chiefs D-line is good. The yeah. Chiefs D-line is good. Their front seven is good, but we're talking about D-line. Their D-line is good. It's going to be important to attack those front three guys for of the Eagles because if you don't and you let them get up to second level – you're asking for trouble. You're just asking for trouble because the Eagles want to run the football, whether it's with Swift or whether it's Hurts. They want to run the football, you know, uh, so you got to keep them off a second level. That's going to be the key to this game, but it's so difficult because those guys are good. Those guys are just good in Philadelphia, man. They are. Yeah, and, and to me, it's like you look at these matchups. So like Jordan uh, Mailata, the ex rugby guy, at the left tackle, big body. Lana Dickerson, big body. Kelsey, small center, but great. You know, plays in the middle there. Tyler Steen, Lane Johnson, top tops in the league. And this will be the real matchup. Like this is going to be. I'm going to see which which Chiefs player. Chris Jones has been in a sack drought for a minute. We're going to see if if Mike Mike Dana. You know, all these years, you know, coming out of Michigan, if he's going to live up to the high, George Karloftis is coming to his prime. Um, you know, I just really like like those guys. But, man, this this offensive line, I just – they got a bone to pick with them. You know, honestly, this is looking like it could be a blowout. This is looking like Philly could really just kind of put their stamp on things and be like, listen, man, the Chiefs have been struggling. So, Chiefs are good coming out of bye week. You know, Andy Reid takes care of them. You know, they, they've had a layoff and – you know, since the London game, and man, I, I'm not confident in the Chiefs in this game, just because of the trench play is going to dominate. I'm talking just dominate for Philly. It does look good for the Eagles when you look at just mat- straight, straight matchups when you come to those guys. George Kloff just though, he's tied for 11th in pressures, 44 this season uh, for George Kloff. He's been playing pretty well. Nick, you mentioned Mike Dana. He's been he's been having a pretty good year. The Chiefs might want to think about extending him before he gets too expensive. Uh, when they talk about just getting guys on cheap contracts over there. The defense has been playing incredibly well this year. Spagnuolo has been scheming up all kinds of stuff, so it wouldn't shock me to see them scheme up all kinds of stuff as well. Uh, I think I, I really do think that uh, earlier in the podcast, Sean Barber talked about stopping the tush push. Listen, you gotta you got to basically treat everything like it's a first and eight, like a, like it's a first and seven. You gotta You got to basically treat it like that. Because they're going to get that, right? They're just they're just going to get that. You got to know that. You got to know that they're going to get that tush push there, that brotherly shove. That's one of the things that 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 just seems like a give them, especially with just how this team I think is made up with Jalen Hurts on top of the the good interior that they have there uh, with Landon Dickerson, Jason Kelsey being really good, and and what uh, the leverage point and everything. That's just they just have that. Like you you know that, uh, and it's going to be uh, one of those things where uh, the Chiefs are going to have to try to scheme up some stuff to confuse Jalen Hurts and force him into some issues where uh, he can turn the ball over and they're going to have to force turnovers and kind of put the offense in some uh, pretty opportune positions to try to capitalize for it. But uh, we're going to go ahead and send it back to Craig. This has been Outside the Trenches. This is our five thing to watch, obviously. We are looking at the trenches. You can hang out with us every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. live, or you can listen to us after the fact wherever you get your podcast. That's going to do it. Craig, take it away. Thanks, Tuck. You know, Every week, those guys talk about the trenches, and it really is probably the biggest matchup of this week on both sides of the ball. You know, a really terrific Eagles offensive line going up against a terrific Chiefs defensive line, and then arguably one of the best defensive lines in the NFL going up against this Chiefs offensive line that's pretty good, but maybe not up to the standards that we thought in the pre preseason there. So that is just going to be a fascinating matchup all around in the trenches this week. I know my eyes will be there. Yours should be too, as were those guys. We are going to take a break, and we will be back with more of this week's five things. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. All right, welcome back. You heard up top from the KC Laboratory talking a little bit about the defense, about what's going to happen out there. You got to hear from our our guys at Outside the Trenches, Tucker D. Franklin, Big B, and Nick Leckie about this 
you know, just absolutely terrific matchup on that side of the ball. We are going to go ahead and we're going to throw to Sean Barber to tell us his key to this week's game. Oh, thank you, man. This is Sean Barber from The Process. And my one thing to watch, man, when it comes to Monday Night Football versus the Philadelphia Eagles, man, you got to control what you can control. Everybody in the league is getting overly obsessed and overly agitated about this tush push, about this brotherly shove, uh, saying that, you know, what the, the, the Eagles don't have 10 yards to go. They only got eight yards to go because every time they get to fourth and two or third and two, they can use this cheat code of a play to get an automatic first down. Well, hey, man, I'll tell you this, Kansas City, I'm not going to spend any time worrying about something I can't control. And I don't think anybody in the league this season is going to be able to stop the tush push. So why even bother try? Let them have their two yards. I'm going to spend my time during the week preparing on the other 50 plays I'm going to see. I'm going to, sp- going to spend my time worrying about how to stop A.J. Brown, how to stop Devonta Smith. If Goddard's 100% healthy, how to stop uh, Goddard. And then, obviously, uh, Hurts, man, the quarterback, he does a phenomenal job of moving the chains with his legs. So if we got to do a spy technique, if we got to do something to keep constricting that pocket and always making him go out to the uh, the left side instead of the right side, uh, we want to make sure we control rush him, control our rush lanes. Uh, we want to make sure that we bring pressure when we want to bring pressure and not be in a situation where we have to. So I believe that his defense has been so rock solid all season long playing the way we play. And so I'm not trying to do anything different when it comes to Philadelphia Eagles. We're going to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, offense, defense. We're going to move the chains by taking the underneath throws, run the ball effectively, let the passing game set up the running game. And then when we get to the red zone, we're going to make them pay. Be very effective in the red zone when you have opportunity. Take sevens instead of threes. And then when it comes to defense, we're going to play the sticks. We're not going to be worried about the tush push or any other uh, unique play that the Philadelphia Eagles might run. We're going to play them hard, smart, tough football for 60, minute, for 60 minutes and let the best team win. So that's my thing to watch. Control the things you can control and not worry about the rest. Again, your host of The Process, Sean Barber, where the process is greater than the product. Back to you. Thanks, Barber. I mean, that that goes for you know every football game, and that goes for life. Control what you can control. The Chiefs handle business and control the things that they can control this week. I'm 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 with Barber there. I think they got a really good shot at beating one of the best teams in the NFL and the Philadelphia Eagles. They're certainly that this is a marquee matchup there. So taking things into your own hands, kind of you know dictating the flow of the game through your actions and through your execution. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do in these big regular season matchups here. So I'm with him there. We are going to throw now to our good pal, fearless leader, BJ Kissel, to talk about the most important Chiefs defensive lineman going into this week. Craig is great, man. I appreciate it. BJ Kissel with your thing to watch in this game as the Chiefs and Eagles get set for a Super Bowl rematch on Monday night at GEHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium. And we appreciate everybody for listening and my thing to watch. Uh, kind of going along with the video I had done uh, about a week ago, talking Chris Jones, uh, expecting more from him at this point in his career with what he's asking for contractually, how he held out to start the year, missed the first game against the Lions. This is the kind of game where Chris Jones needs to step up and make an impact. Hasn't had the greatest uh, last couple of weeks to his season. Started off strong, had a sack or at least a half sack in every game for the first seven weeks and hasn't had a sack in the last two weeks. Lowest two games of graded over the last two years for Chris Jones, according to Pro Football Focus, have been the last two weeks. And so this is the point in which we need to see Chris Jones step up. You can see the game against Miami with a PFF grade of 52, the game against Denver with a 48.8. Again, those two would have been the lowest two scores of his entire last season. So this is the point that we need to see Chris Jones step up uh, first seven games, averaged four pressures per game for the Chiefs defense over the last two weeks, averaged just two pressures, four total over the last two games. And so uh, you look at what Chris Jones has done historically over the last couple of years in their games against the Eagles, including the Super Bowl last year, haven't been necessarily his best performances, which when you give the other guy some credit or you take a look at who he's going up against, it makes sense. You're going up against Jason Kelsey. You're going up against one of the top offensive lines in all of football. 
But that's exactly when you need to expect guys like Chris Jones, all pro players, guys who are among the best or in the conversation of being the best at that position. We need to see it from Chris Jones at this point. The Chiefs defense has been outstanding. It's the reason that they're leading the AFC right now is because of what that group has done with Steve Spagnuolo. Chris Jones was a huge part of it over the first seven weeks. I know the grades, some of the the numbers are lower. Maybe he's getting more attention. Maybe he's banged up for all those different reasons. But this is the time in the season where your guys got to step up and make plays. We know Chris Jones can do it. He's proved it time and time again during his time with the Chiefs. Now's the time we need to see it. All the lights are going to be on. Everyone in the NFL is going to be watching. Under the lights, Monday Night Football, probably the highest rated Monday Night Football game we'll have all year. This is when you need your superstars to step up and make plays against guys like Jason Kelsey. Make a play on second and six to force it to be third and eight or third and nine or third and six. Hold this fantastic Eagles running game with DeAndre Swift, with Jalen Hurts. They're averaging about 130 yards per game on the ground. They can get it done in a lot of different ways. It starts up front. I want to see it with Chris Jones, Charles Amenhu, George Karloftis. I want to see all those guys go off in the same week. And we'll see this defense get even better, which has always been kind of the thing with Steve Spagnuolo's defenses will get better throughout the year. Now let's see it from Chris Jones. All right. Thanks, BJ. Hey, it's been a little while since we've seen a Chris Jones game. Not that he's been bad or anything like that, but, you know, now would be the time. Coming out of the bye week here against a terrific offensive line for Chris Jones to show up and wreck havoc in this game. I think if we if we see a prime Chris Jones game in this one, not only can it get some of those, you know, end of the year awards that Chris Jones has been tweeting about this offseason that he personally wants to go and achieve, his incentives that he personally wants to go and achieve, but also can kind of really focus in for the rest of the NFL in a primetime game what this Chief Stevens is about, what they can do, and who that guy is on the defense there. I think it's a little bit nebulous. You know, we we talk about Trent McDuffie, but Jerry Sneed the Nick Boltons, the Drew Tranquils, Justin Reeds. You know, there are so many guys on this defense that contribute, but and it makes it hard for maybe some of the national media to narrow it down and really focus on a guy. Chris Jones is that guy. A massive game on Monday night football against a really good NFC team that could kind of concrete the Chiefs into the number one seed late in the season. Boy, that would go a long way towards extending this out and making this a really, really big narrative game for the national media. Now, we're going to close it out with our guys over at Only Weird Games. We're going to hear from Joshua Briscoe. We're going to hear from Seth Kaiser. We're going to hear from Nate Taylor about the chemistry between the wide receivers and Patrick Mahomes coming off of the bye week. Thank you, Craig. I don't know if anyone's told you this lately, but you're great, and I wish more people would embrace that. I'm Joshua Briscoe with Seth Kaiser here from Only Weird Games. Seth, the uh, the Monday Night Football game, I don't know if people are talking about it, but I believe these teams played in February uh, in a non-regular season game, and both of these teams seem to have a lot going for them, although they didn't play last week. So, I mean, are they even ready for football? Uh, It's a huge game. It's really exciting. We're ready for it to finally get here. I'm ready for it to kick off. But, Seth, you wrote about something this week in the Chief in the North newsletter that I think is our thing for today. What are people getting wrong in part of the discourse about Patrick Mahomes and his wide receivers? Well, you know, I'm really glad you asked because the the, the numbers that I was able to find were nearly as great as Craig. Not quite as great. great. No, not that great. No, no, not that great. That'd be ridiculous. They were like as good. They were like as great as Craig. (laughs) Dang it, man. Oh, it's good. Okay. Um, so one of the things, looking into some of the numbers with the Chiefs, when you when when you examine some of the deeper numbers that exist that PFF does chart, um, which is, you know, it's a good thing in terms of like perfectly covered plays and stuff. One thing that that I discovered this week, kind of looking at some of the uh the stats that have been made publicly available, and I did write about this on the Chief of the North newsletter, is that there have been plays with open receivers. There have been plays where Mahomes is creating. There have been plays where the offensive line is pass protecting well. There's been all of these things. They are just a little too often not intersecting. And I think people underestimate just how easily a few small execution mistakes here and there can really affect things. And to focus, especially on the wide receiver group, people are saying that the Chiefs wide receivers aren't getting open. That's not necessarily 100% true. They... You know, Mahomes, I've charted him having 20 missed shots this year, 
which is a, a clear within the framework of the reads, a receiver that he really should have found. That I mean, last year I charted eleven of his games. He had nine total. So you know you can see we've almost like flipped the numbers, right? He's averaging a little over two per game, which is insane for him. That's an incredibly high number for him. Um, last year he averaged like zero point eight a game. It was something ridiculous. So, but you know, so oh well, Seth. Oh, so it's Mahomes. He's playing badly. No, not really. He's playing really well, and he's had multiple snaps where he's bought time. Maybe even the pass protection's been good. And no one's getting open. But it's not as often as people think. The problem is they haven't really managed to coincide the he's reading the field the way he needs to, he's showing trust, and the guys are where they're supposed to be on time. Now, am I going to put that more in the receivers than Mahomes? Yeah, a little bit, because one of them has been arguably the greatest player we've ever seen for five years. So that tends to earn you more benefit of a doubt. So that's what I'm going to have my eye on the most. The Eagles secondary... Um, they obviously made a trade for Biard, so they should be much improved over what they've been, but they have struggled on the back end. They've had a lot of injuries. I think Slay is back now. I think maybe he's out again. I can't even remember. Don't rely on me for that information, folks. Just know, <laughs> just know the, the, the Eagle secondary has not performed well this year. And so I really think this is an opportunity, depending on what the offensive line can do, depending on, you know, Mahomes is going to buy time. You know, Reed will have a good game plan. He always does, um, especially for big games. It's going to be about actually being on the same page consistently. And that word consistency that we've been hammering lately, that that's the key to all of it. And it makes sense when you think about when everything is a little bit out of sync. And even that is sort of an overused term at this point. But if you've got three cogs that have to all be spinning in perfect unison, also not a great analogy. Uh, but, you, you know, on a passing play, you were relying on your quarterback, your route runners, and your pass protection. If your route runners are not doing a great job. If it's merely fine, they're not to blame for every single problem, but they are occasionally part of the problem. Yep. Well, when Mahomes misses two shots a game, those missed shots hurt way more because I would imagine there are fewer to choose from, right? I mean, exactly. there, there are fewer of those instances that you can take advantage of. Compound that with the offensive line also that I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the offensive line has been pretty good in pass pro for the most part this year. Penalties are a whole other thing and oh, yeah. pretty good is not code for secretly perfect. But now Mahomes is getting flushed out in one of those times that the, a receiver has gotten open or the pocket all forms form and somebody gets open and Mahomes misses it. Yep. it. It becomes easier to see. No one no one is erasing the issues of other units, which yep. is something that Mahomes has, has done many, many times, something that Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill and to some extent Juju Smith-Schuster did many, many times, something that Mitchell Schwartz did many times and and that offensive line would do, but that that feels like eons ago, which is kind of crazy. But it, it makes sense to me that those things would kind of compound that way. Right. It's like the opposite. We talk a lot about complimentary pass rush. Yeah. How you, 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 you can have one guy who's an absolute superstar who wins 20 to 25% of his snaps, but you still got 75% of the snaps out there, best case scenario. And if things add up with little mistakes on offense, like you said, Mahal was missing two plays per game. That shouldn't be the biggest deal in the world, but if there's another two or three plays per game that are getting missed purely by the receivers, and then another two or three, and they're all different plays, now all of a sudden, especially let's say three of them are third downs, those are drive enders, and that's where the problem's coming, and that's where, honestly, it really is a lot of execution stuff overall, which to me is, it, it kind of honestly makes me feel better, because for as much as we're, well, the interior offensive line hasn't been as good as it was last year or even the year before, we know they can play better. We know that we've got better tape with Jawan Taylor, and, and he's kind of become a scapegoat, which, whatever. But uh, we, we know we've got tape of him being better. We know Donovan Smith has been okay-ish, not great, but we know he can maintain that level. We know the Holmes can play better. With, like, all these things, the biggest unknown is the receivers, and I think that's why people hammer on that over and over and over. That, that makes sense. We talk about positive regression sometimes. We expect positive regression for Mahomes and the interior and, and Juwan Taylor. If it's sustained for Smith, that's great. But we don't really know what the receiver's true water level is, which has made them a mystery that was exciting for a little while, and now they're kind of mortifying at times. But out of the bye, maybe we'll see the Chiefs put a little bit more of that together. It sure would be great. Oh, speaking of... Back to you, Craig. Thanks, Josh. All right. That's been everybody at Five Things. You got to hear the lab talk a little bit about how this defense can 
keep things, you know, kind of in check for this Philadelphia Eagles offense and what they can do, you know, to try and stop them up front. We're going to hear a little, or we heard a little bit from outside the trenches doing their normal thing, talking about a big trench matchup. Sean Barber about controlling what you can control. We got to hear from BJ about Chris Jones and how this could be a really big game for him leading into the end of the season where he's been so good over the past several seasons. And then from only weird games, talking about wide receivers, talking about Mahomes. Very, very much a topic on you know Twitter this week with Connor Embry coming up there and speaking about some of the wide receiver struggles and the ways that they're going to use them. So that that was a really good, very prescient topic to hit this week. We've got the Eagles coming to town to play Monday night football against the Kansas City Chiefs in Arrowhead Stadium. That uh, there's not much more that you can ask for from you know from this sort of matchup coming off of a bye. Andy Reid is set up here to be if he wins this game to be the all-time leader in wins in Chiefs franchise history against the franchise that he is currently the all-time leading coach in wins in the Philadelphia Eagles. How poetic would that be to come down with a win? in Arrowhead, on primetime, and achieve that goal for the second time for a second franchise. It truly would be majestic to see Big Red get that one there. If you're going to be there, you need to head over to Lot J. They've got the best tailgate that you are going to find there. Our guy, Tucker Deep Franklin, he's going to be there. So you need to go out there, find him, find where the seltzers are. He's just going to be gravitating towards them. I, I've been around him, you know, in public with him. At times, you walk by a place that has seltzers, and he just got peels off. Like it, It's like an orbit thing. He just kind of gravitates towards them. Go find him out there. You're going to have a good time with him. You're going to have a good time in Lot J. Make sure that you are tuning in to the 810 pregame show. They are the home of the NFL. As you are out there at the tailgate, you want to make sure, after you're done with all your KCSN content for the week, that you are tuning in to them to get their pregame show. And then after the game is over, hopefully celebrating Andy Reid hitting that milestone for two different franchises. Make sure that you are locked back in here on the KCSN YouTube page or on the KCSN Apple, you know, Spotify, audio feeds, wherever you're getting your podcast from. We will be breaking down the game and the KCSN postgame show brought to you by Kingdom Bar and Grill. This is a massive game. And, you know, it's coming off of a week where the Chiefs were on by. I'm ready. I think you're ready. I know all of us here at KCSN are ready. So make sure that you are locked and loaded and that you come back here after the game. Be kind to each other, and we will catch you later.